play by his Ghana winning gold at the African Cup at the expense of Uganda, but this is the senior team. And there you can see that man there, a certain Mukwala of Asan Tukotoro getting the starting lineup. It's a big game for Coach Otto Ado, hoping to get his first win on his return. The Ugandans have other plans as well. First half, and of course, the entire match commentary will be brought to you by Felix Romark and Josiah Okokwe. Do enjoy the game from Marrakesh. Start Grand Marrakesh here in the city of Marrakesh, where it's still the Africa Week celebrations, which has been earmarked here in Morocco. And that is the Black Stars of Ghana coming up against the Cranes of Uganda in an international friendly book. Teams coming into this particular game at the back of defeats. Ghana bow into a 2 1 defeat against the Super Eagles of Nigeria just a couple of days ago. But then for the Cranes of Uganda, they were walloped 5 or 4 0 against Comoros when they last played in this international break. We are at the Grand Stad the Grand Marrakesh here in the city of Marrakesh where uh, you have the referees who will be uh, taking the coin toss before the commencement of the game. But then there you have it, the Black Stars of Ghana where uh, the team will be playing with Jojo Wallacott in post. Um, Anan Ebenezer will also make the list after coming on for a cameo appearance in that game against Nigeria. Edmond Ado will be playing as a makeshift centre-back in this particular one. Dennis Odoi has been given the nod. Jerome Opoku, after getting himself sent off, he also is making the lineup this afternoon here in Morocco. You also have Abdul Salib Samet, who plays for Lance in the French League. Um, Abdul Fatawi Sahaku, Abu Francis Ayu, Jordan Pierre, who would also captain the Ghana Black Stars for the second game running. And then also NS Noama Semenyo Antoine Selom completing the 11 for the Black Stars of Ghana. But then for Team Moro, to Team Uganda, sorry. It's Tom Ikara who plays for Bull in the Uganda Top Flight uh, Division where you also have Bevis Bugabi, Peter Toby, Sidic also there, Dennis Kaka Umoni, Elvis Buomono, Gerard Sikaganda, Kenneth Semakula, also there, Travis Mutiaba, Steven Ukwala, the Kumasha Santikotoko lad, is featuring today after being on the bench in that game against Morocco. But then also Rogers Kasimato and then Bayo Fahad who plays for Viscov in the Czech Republic completing the 11 for this particular encounter. But then the center referee will be El Farik Hamza, the 34 year old who referees in the Moroccan top flight professional Botola. He also officiated last year during the under 20 World Cup in Argentina. He will be assisted at the first on line one by Brinsky Zakaria, also from Morocco. In line two will be an Algeli Isani, also from Morocco. And then the fourth official will be El Tumamani Tariq, or from Morocco. So uh, it's just getting about ready to get set for this particular one. As the cranes of Uganda coming up against the Black Stars of Ghana, I'll be your commentator all the way from Marrakesh in Morocco. My name is Josal Kokwe, and I'll be doing this with my co commentator, Felix Roma. Felix, uh, kickoff is just about uh, coming up, but then what do you make of this one? Both teams coming at the into this one at the back of huge, or um, let me say defeat, uh, Ghana losing to Nigeria, and then also the Cranes of Uganda losing uh, to Comoros. Well, for Otuado, he'll be hoping that the second coming, he gets a win in the second game uh, for the Blasters. Uh, uh, a bit surprising that he has so many changes in this particular game. Jojo Walakot, Denis Odo, Beneza Anan, Francis Abuena, Abdul Fatal Isaku, all coming in in place of Atizigi, Ali Dusaidu, Patrick Pozo, and forcing a man. But it, it, it won't be a very uh, uh, easy game. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, but I'm, I must say that I'm very happy, happy to see Stephen Mukwela 
you know, a Ghanaian Premier League player playing for Uganda in a game against Ghana. So I wish him all the best, though. As the cranes of Uganda who get us going here at the Stad Grand Marrakesh in the city of Marrakesh, where the Moroccans are earmarking the African Week celebrations. Quite a number of African teams are moving in there to join with the celebrations, but then there's the Blasters of Ghana in possession currently of that, and it's the captain who get things going for them, Andre Pierre Ayou. He also led the team when they played against the Super Eagles of Nigeria just a couple of days ago, but then Anthony or uh, Ebenezer Anan will effect that uh, throw in and the ball will go to the goalkeeper Jojo Walakot who plays for Hibernian in the Scottish top flight and the Blasters will begin to build up in the early moment of uh, this game. Fatal Isahaku will go back and find Dennis Odoi back to Edmond Ado. He really fit in well when he played as a makeshift centre-back in that game against the Super Eagles of Nigeria four days ago but then here is Jerome Opoku with a long one trying to locate Antoine Semenyo. But then it's the craze of Uganda who get this one out for a throwing to the Black Stars of Ghana. Well, a lot of people will be surprised to see Edmond, you know, Ado playing in central, central uh, defense. I'm sure to Ado wants somebody who can have the ball at his feet and then try and initiate attack from defense. And that is the reason why a player like Edmond Ado is playing from, from defense. But I've never seen him play such a number of games from that particular position. But he went on the game against Nigeria, and I'm sure that Otuado wants to have options, including having a player like Edmond from that particular side of defense. Early doors in this particular game in Marrakesh, where the Cranes of Uganda are playing against the Black Stars of Ghana. But then it looks like Ghana are in firm control in the early minutes. Just two minutes played here, and it's Antoine Semenyo who just fell off that challenge. We'll just go back and find Edmond Ado, who just swing one towards Odoi. Odoi will just lay that onto the part of Fatal Abdul Isahaku. A little skill over there, but then the ball is out for a throw in to Uganda. The Ugandans, they are coming into this one after that humiliating defeat at the hands of Komoro, or Comoros, if I should put it, they lost by four goals to zero without a single. A reply and they would restart play here a long throw trying to find his teammate over there Uganda on the ascendancy over here Uganda still with the ball and he will try one he goes long but then that one flies over the, the post and it's a goal kick to the Black Stars of Ghana. That was a very poor attempt from Rogers Casimato. He had options both on his right and left even with um, Stephen Mukwela waiting to receive that ball but the decision from Matu was very, very awful. So, Black Stars will begin build up again. Abdul Salit Samet would find Edmond Ado. Edmond Ado. A little time on the ball. He has options, but he will decide to go long, trying to find that incisive run of Antoine Semenyo, but then not productive from the Black Stars as they will relinquish possession to the cranes of Uganda. Mind you, that the Black Stars also lost narrowly to the arbitrary rivals, Nigeria, when they played last Thursday in Marrakesh. They lost by two goals to one. But then it's Uganda here, a long one, trying to find Mato. But then Ebenezer Anand will go back to his goalkeeper, who would also just play one infield. It's still the Black Stars of Ghana in possession. They are trying to be calm and composed whenever they have the ball. And just like they played against the Super Eagles, it's just the same pattern here. That's a long one. Over here, trying to find Semenya, who controls one, lays it down for Jordan Ayu. The captain goes past his back up, but then he's brought down, and the referee says it's a free kick to the Black Stars of Ghana. The Black Stars have a free kick. And it's Jordan Ayu who manages to win one within close range, just some few meters away from the 18-yard box of Uganda. And what can the Black Stars do with this one? It's just five minutes played here, but it is 0-0 between the two sides. Yosa, I'm sure that one thing that Otuado would want to work on tactically has to be set pieces. You know, I don't, I don't quite remember the last time Ghana was scored from a set piece. We've been very, very awful when we get ourselves in good position with set pieces like this. And I'm hoping that he will, he will want to work on, on that. Because sometimes in football, 
one of the, the opportunities for you to get onto the score sheet is through set pieces. And in recent times, Ghana have been, or the blasters have been awful when we get opportunities like this. I don't know if it's going to be Jordan or Ernest Nyama, but from a look of things, I'm sure the captain will be going for that. The last three goals the blasters have scored in all competitions have been from the penalty spot. The two goals they scored against Mozambique in their last game of the AFCON, that shambolic display in the most recent AFCON. And just in that game against Nigeria, Jordan Ayu also did justice from 12 yards. But then what can he do from about 26 yards? And it's Jordan Ayu. Can he put this one in? Jordan! No, the goalkeeper just parries that away. And what a sublime free kick from Jordan Ayu, the captain of the side. But then it's the goalkeeper, Tommy Kara, who keeps Uganda in the game after six minutes. That was a very good save from Tommy Okawa. But that free kick had a lot of power and precision. And that was an equally good save from Tommy Ikaba. Black Stars asking all the questions here in the early minutes of this game. Jordan will swing this one in. He's on set his duties. Who is at the end of that? Would this be a goal? Yes, it is. And who had a touch? It is Jerob Opoku, the Istanbul Basak Seher defender. He is the one with the last touch. But then the all important touch was from him. But then what about that for a set piece? from Jordan Ayu, and Jordan Opoku was at the right place, at the far end, to just connect that. And it's Ghana 1, Uganda nil. In those positions in the, within the box, they will be expecting deliveries like this. And I must say that it was a very good delivery from uh, uh, Jordan Ayu. Earlier when I spoke about Otuado, would, would be wanting to work on set pieces. And look at the two set pieces that we've got. The freaky from Jordan being pushed away for a corner kick, and then he went into the corner post, took a very good corner kick into the box, and then that was a very simple finish by Jerome uh, 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 Opoku. So player will we'll start here at the start Grand Marrakesh, where it's all being the Black Stars asking all the questions, and they also have the all-important early goal from Jerome Opoku, who just connected from Jordan Ayu's corner kick, but then is the Ugandans who break away freely again, trying to catch the Blasters on the break. That ball to the part of Steven Bukwala, but then he's been brought down. And this is a yellow card, yes. The referee shows the yellow card, and that's the first yellow card of the game. But then it looks like Bayo Fahad is being a turn in the flesh of the Blasters defenders already inside eight minutes. But that was a very, very quick move from the, the Cranes. In football, when you when you score a goal, you are so vulnerable to concede, and that's how they wanted to quickly start play and then make sure that they level the score. But it was a very good attempt from the defender because if he hadn't, you know, fouled the player, I would have been on an offensive uh, mood. But that was also a good call from the referee, and they, they deserve the look at as well. All right, so Dennis Kakaomoni will be the one affected this for the Cranes of Uganda. He sends one in. Where do one be at the end of that? Yes, there's a flag from the Ugandans, but then. The Ghanaians will be able to clear their lines with Ebenezer and a good tackle from Travis Butuaba. Then again, the Black Stars will regain possession and they will try to build up from the back. Coming into this game, the Black Stars are winless in their last five games, both in international friendlies and then also the AFCON where they won or they drew two of their games and lost one in that opening game to Cape Verde. But then, for Uganda, they have won two out of their last five games, including friendlies and also qualifiers, losing three in that span. So it's the Ghanaians who have a lot to play for this time because the last time they won a game was when they played against Madagascar and it was Inaki Williams' last minute header that gave them a win. And that happened on the 17th of November, 2023. So they've not been or they've been without a win the Blasters, the whole of 2024, which doesn't really look good for them. So you didn't expect them to start this game any better than they are doing now. Of course, especially when this is the last friendly games you are going to get, you know, uh, in, the, in this FIFA window. The next games are going to be qualifiers for the uh, AFCON in Morocco and then the World Cup qualifiers. So in the next 24 months, or let's say close to two years, you won't be getting friendly games. And I'm sure that a lot of our players will be trying to play, you know, into the good books of Otuado. And that is why it is a must-win game for the team. Coaches will tell you it's not about the win, but for the players, they know that in recent times, records or wins have been come the way of the Blasters. So they want to win this particular game before they go into that crucial World Cup qualifier against Mali in March. So it's Bayou Fahad who plays for Visco 
in the Czech Republic receiving treatment from the physios. Looks like he collided with a Black Stars player and he is being treated. So he is going to take a breather before joining the action again. But then at 11 minutes played here at the start, Grand Marrakesh, where it's the African Week celebrations in Morocco. And the Black Stars, what a time they are having up north. So player will restart here with Tom Ikara, the goalkeeper of the Cranes of Uganda. It's already inside the first 12 minutes, and it looks like the Ugandans have been limited to chasing shadows here in Marrakesh, and it's Jordan Jerome Opoku finds Jordan, who has drifted very, very backward. Jordan still in position. Would find Salis Samet still in position. And it looks like they are pinning the Ugandans into their own half. Fatawi Sahaku to Salis. Jerome will recover that ball. Ebenezer Anand. Jordan will flick that. What a beautiful ball. Back to Jordan. Jordan will love to do something with this one. He swings in the cross. Will be at the end of that one. No, but then Tommy Kara comfortably will deal with this one. Not a bad build-up from the Blast Stars of Ghana. Impressive. Impressive. I love the, the one-touch passes, the pass and move. It's been very, very swift. And, and you could tell that Otuado is trying to get them to play to a particular pattern and, and system. So far, it's been very, very impressive. So it's the Blast Stars of Ghana leading here against the Cranes by goal to zero. Toby Peter Sebek to Elvis Bomono back to Sebek. Sebek will try to locate his teammate back to Bomono who turn away from that challenge to Kenneth Semakula. Semakula back to Sikanda. But then the Blasters will steal that ball, but then the referee says it is an advantage to the Cranes of Uganda who will get the ball again. And the Black Stars will have the defending to do intermittently. Ball to Elvis Bomono. The Ugandans enjoying a brief spell of possession since the game started. Rogers Mato trying to find his teammate, but then it's Bayou Fahad who has gone down under that challenge, that heavy challenge. And it's Bayou Fahad asking the questions of the linesman. Brinsky Zakaria, he thought he should have won a free kick on the occasion. I totally agree with the referee. I think that, that was uh, the, the linesman, I should say. That was a very clean tackle and there was nothing like a fire in that. So it's Ebenezer Aran who is playing at the left back position who effect the throw and it's Jordan who is so strong at fending off challenges and it looks like his confidence has skyrocketed over the last couple of games. But he's been doing quite well for Palace in the Premier League and even for Ghana, now he's even the captain of this you know, team. So it's upon him to make sure that his leadership comes to tell in this game. I love the fact that he's tracking back as well to help in defence, especially where where Audrey is, uh, is uh, where uh, Abdul Salid and then Anand is working from. Uh, so earlier on, that was the head coach of the Cranes of Uganda, Paul Put, the Belgian, the 67 year old Belgian who has really had or spent a chunk of his career, coaching career, on the African continent, coaching teams like the Gambia, Burkina Faso, coaching Kenya, Guinea, Congo, and then 
the cranes of Uganda. So that's quite a number of teams he's coached on the African continent, and that tells you the rich vein of experience he has as a coach on this terrain. But then it's the cranes of Uganda who try to break away, but then that pass just wouldn't get to Bayou for heart. And as Jerome Poku will recover, and Salis will try to send the Black Stars forward, He's trying to die in traffic for a while. And it's Abu Francis. And it looks like the Black Stars are in no hurry. And it looks like the Ugandans are not putting them under any sort of pressure because there's no press from the Ugandans. At all. But then again, if you have the lead, you, it means that you have the momentum of the game. They are controlling the tempo of the game, especially with Salis on, on the ball. And the Ugandans are trying as much as possible to attack the Ghanaians from the right side of, 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 our, of our defense. And, and then again, for this one, I think that the referee was it right with the foul. Mutuaba is in some sort of pain over there after that heavy challenge from Ebenezer Anan. And the Ugandans are protesting because they believe they should have had a free kick. He's gotten the free kick, but I'm sure maybe, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, Rogers Kasim is asking for a yellow card for uh, uh, Ebenezer uh, Anan. It's been very lovely though, but I think that the a little bit of his game where he needs to release the ball as quickly as possible. We, we earlier all spoke about the press, and at this particular moment, Rogers Kasim was trying to press Ebenezer into losing the ball, and then the Ghanaian ended up foul, uh, committing a foul in that instance. That was quite heavy from Ebenezer Anan, the left back for the Black Stars of Ghana. And you can see that direction that the new coach, Otuado, is trying to take this new team. Quite a number of youngsters being called up this time round for the two international friendly games they played. And Ebenezer Anan featured in that game against Nigeria. And he put up a decent performance. And that warranted him a starting bet in this particular game. But then it's the Blasters of Ghana who would restart play. And it's Ed Monado together with the centre back pairing. Jerome Opoku swings one tries to find Dennis Odoe, but then there was just too much in it. And it's the Ugandans who try to also get something out of this possession. The long throw. And that's the bench of the Blasters where you can see Ali Dusedu and Co. Just waiting till it's their time. And it's Ebenezer Anna. Has he given the ball away? No, but then Yes, that was a vital, vital touch from Edmond Ado, who was trying to recover. But then the referee is not listening to any appeals at all. And she thinks it's a corner kick to Uganda. Well, that was very lucky from Ebenezer Anna. He nearly gave the ball away in possession. And earlier I spoke about how his decision making has been very, very awful to me. He needs to calm down. But then again, I think that the, the players also must give him the outlet. To, to, to send the ball, receive the ball, and that is what they, they haven't been. We are playing with the, with the back four, but then again, you realize that the full backs are really pushing up the field. Audrey and then Ebenezer and are doing a lot of push up within the flanks, within the, uh, the, 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 the left back position and the right back position. That is bringing a lot of pressure into the central defense. Corner kick to the cranes of Uganda. You can see some of the center backs you know, trying to attack this one. But then it is a Kumasi Asante Kotoko striker. Who is ready to effect this one? Steven Desse Mukwala. The storm of Kampala, they call him uh, in swinger. But then, no. After an initial fumble over there, it's the goalkeeper, Wallacott, who will just recover this and he would release Edmond Ado to Abu, back to Edmond Ado. Edmond Ado will move to Jerome Opoku, the goal scorer. And that was his first goal in his third appearance for the Black Stars of Ghana. Mind you, he was part of that team that got walloped by the US of A in that friendly last year. Ebenezer Anan couldn't keep that in play. And it's the craze of Uganda who applies some pressure, throwing by Mbomo, who move into midfield, would find Kenneth Semakula to Toby Peter Sebe to his goalkeeper Ikara who cleared that one infield, a long one. But then good work done by Jerome Poku. And it's the Black Star still in possession. That flick from Noama. But then who gets at the end of the day? No, it's Toby Sebe who tried to clear that one. Finds his teammate. And it's the present Odoi who wins that one. 
So it's Uganda who tried to break away with Rogers Mato, but a good job done by Jordan Ayu. He's been very, very hard working so far in this game, so decent with his play. And also tracking back to support Ebenezer Anna and then Abdul Salis on that on that particular flank. That is typical Jordan Ayu, who nearly he, most of the times when you watch him, he always wants to track back and then help in, in, in defense. And that is what has kept him going, especially for Crystal Palace. So it's the Ugandans, but then that should have been the equalizer, but then that no, it's a penalty to the Grains of and Uganda. And very, very star. clumsy. Was there a second and again, again, it's Ebenezer Anan. He's really been struggling inside the first 21 minutes in this game. He gave away a foul, but now he's giving away a penalty to the Cranes of Uganda, and this time around they have a chance to draw level here at the start Grand de Marrakesh. The Cranes have actually you know, done well, knowing very well that it's been the weakest link in the back four for the Ghanaians, and most of their attack has come from that particular side where Ebenezer Anand has been operating from. That was very, very awful. It's, it's not had quite a good game in the opening 21 minutes of this game. So within a split second, the Blasters of Ghana were caught napping and it was Ebenezer Anand who clumsily clattered the Ugandan in the box. And the Ugandans have the opportunity to draw level here. And is the porcupine warrior, Stephen Desemukwala. Stephen Desemukwala, who has been tasked to draw the Uganda's level. He's yet to score for Uganda in 13 appearances. So in his 14 appearance, can he score his first goal? Stephen Desemukwala, yes! He pulls parity for the players of Uganda. And right before he kicked that ball, We were reminded that in 13 appearances already for the Cranes, he was yet to score. But then, coolly and calmly, under no pressure whatsoever, as the porcupine warrior who makes Ugandans proud here in Marrakesh. That was a very good penalty from Stephen Mukwela. And I'm sure that he'll be very proud to play his, you know, so score his first goal you know, against a Ghanaian uh, and the Ghanaian national team being playing for a Ghanaian club in Kumasi as anti But that was an excellent penalty. I don't think that Jojo Wallacott had any answers to that. And that means that they will surely fancy their chances in this game. And let's be very honest, I think that in the last 10 minutes of this game, they've been the better side. They've attacked very, very, especially from where Beneza Anand has been operating. I'm sure going forward, they want to use that. But would this be an opportunity again? No. And it looks like the Ugandans have turned the heat on. And it's the guard of Black Stars defense that looked to be in disarray already after conceding that penalty from Stephen Mukwala. But then they were saved over there. It could have been two for Uganda in the space of just a minute. Good anticipation from uh, Jojo Wallaco to come out and then clear the danger for the Black Stars. So it's Jerome Opoku. And the Black Stars again acting very, very jittery at the back. And as the Ugandans who regain possession, try to move, advance into the third half. But then Dennis Odoi will have some defending to do, and he does that perfectly. Fending off that run and charge from Steven Desemukwala, the striker for Uganda. It's 1 1 here at the Grand Stand in Marrakesh in Morocco, where we are bringing to you live coverage and commentary of the game between the Black Stars of Ghana and the cranes of Uganda. After 25 minutes of play, is Uganda one, Ghana one. Ghana will try to search for it. Abdul Isahaku, again, the one, two, he receives it again. Checks out to his left, will he shoot that? Yes, he does, but then the ball flies agonizingly wide, and Isahaku, he's not really found his rhythm yet, but then that wasn't a bad effort from him. Well, for me, I, I, I would say that this is not the Isaku we know because normally when it cuts into his left, you expect that ball to be on, 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 on target. But he's yet to get into the game. I don't think that a lot of the players have contributed to that, giving him more of the ball. He, he, he needs to get into play and then try as hard as possible to receive the ball and then go on those wonderful runs that we normally see him do when he's playing for Leicester and then sometimes the U20 team. So it's Salis. Try to find some comfort passing the ball backwards to his 
center backs, but then Francis Abu with a long diagonal pass to the feet of Semenyo, the one two, but then that ball to Jordan. Jordan will try to work his way around some Ugandan checks over there. He's forced to pass backward to Jerome Salis with the ball. Moves into inside the center circle, finds Ed Monado. Back to Salis Samet. Salis to Francis Abu. Francis Abu would find Ernest Nwama with that quick feet over there, lovely skill. But still, still in possession, the Black Stars is Abu. To Edmond Ado, back to Jerome Opoku. We'll find Ebenezer Anand, who's playing as the left back today for the Black Stars. And it's the Black Stars controlling affairs now, trying to find an opening, passing the ball around smoothly. But then the Ugandans are keeping their shape. Not ready to concede any more goals. It's Jerome Opoku to Edmond Ado. And now it's Abu. Dennis, one touch into space for Isahaku. Back to Dennis all the way. There's a, a trip over there. Revy says it's a penalty. Yeah. Penalty to the Black Stars of Ghana. They've enjoyed possession in the last two minutes. Passing the ball around swiftly, smoothly, trying to find an opening. But then, fortunately for them, they get a penalty. And that over overlapping round from Dennis Ode was very, very good. I'm sure that is what uh, Otuado wants them to play. And that is why you see the left and the right back being too high up the pitch. But I don't know why Kenneth Simukola is complaining because this is a clear foul on, 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 on Dennis Ode and clearly a good uh, decision by the referee to award Ghana the penalty. For, for, for that foul. So it's Jordan Pierre Ayu who has the chance to score in his last three consecutive games for the Black Stars of Ghana after scoring in that AFCON game against Mozambique and then a couple of days ago against Nigeria. Can he make it four out of four for the Black Stars of Ghana here in Marrakesh? Jordan Ayu against Tom Ikara. He's always had that knack for being cool and collected from the spot. And he goes again, but then Jordan Ayu makes no mistake from 12 yards. And he puts the Blasters of Ghana ahead once more in this tie. It's the Blasters of Ghana 2, the Cranes of Uganda 1. Not surprising. Look at Jordan Ayu from the, from the penalty spot. He had limits, and that is the reason why when it comes to penalties, he's the one who normally gets to score for Ghana. I'm sure that within the team, he's the penalty taker. He's done that at the AFCON just, that the AFCON that ended in Ivory Coast and into the game against Nigeria, score from the spot, and then this game as well. But I, I think it's been a fairly balanced uh, game. We haven't seen clear-cut chances from both teams. Ghana have kept possession of the ball, but in defense, especially from our left-back position where Ebenezer Anan has been operating. That is where we've had a problem. But aside that, I think that we've been relatively good in the opening almost 30 minutes of this game. So it's the Blasters of Ghana 2, Uganda 1, and it's Jordan Pierre Ayu who was giving the Blasters the lead for the second time in this game. And that was his 24th goal in just his wide and second appearance. But then the Blasters will move forward again. No, they've been stopped by Travis Mutuaba. And it's Kenneth Semakula who move wide and find Rogers Mato. Rogers Mato, a little bit of a dummy over there, stays on his feet. And it's a true ball to Rogers Mato. The ball into the box. This could be dangerous for the Blasters. No, but then that effort from Bayo Fahad just flashing across the face of goal. But then that wasn't disappointing at all from Uganda. What a swift attack. Excellent, excellent move, especially with, with the cross that came in for, for Bayo. Bayo should have done better. I was thinking he might go for a first touch and then get a spot within the goalpost, but that attempt was very, very awful. But the move to get him into the boss was very excellent. The build-up was superb from the Cranes. The Cranes, despite being on the defensive end for larger times, whenever they attack, it looks like they attack with so much purpose and conviction. But then Jeremy Koku will try to get the Blasters on the front foot over here, Salis finds Edmond Ado. It's Francis Abu. He's playing 
in that pivot row with Abdul Salis Samet this afternoon. Back to Edmond Ado. Edmond Ado will try to look at Dennis Odoi, but then that ball is intercepted. But then Black Stars will gain possession again. Jerome Mokoku will recover that loose ball. Black Stars still in possession. Ball to Edmond Ado. Jerome Mokoku. Jojo Walako tries to go wide, but then the Black Stars will still keep possession because the referee or the line sponsor says they have a throw in. Quickly effected. And it's Abdul Fatawi Saku on his favorite left foot. Tries to move away from his marker. Still Abdul Fatawi Saku in the box. But then that was just too long for anyone to get at the end of. And that will be a long clearance from the cranes of Uganda. Black Stars with yet another throw in. Well, Fatal Isaku decision making in this game, the final decision making has been very awful. The weight on that ball was too heavy and even too long for any player to get a final touch onto it. I, I, I think in this game, he really needs to work, work on, on, on that delivery. So, another loose ball, a wayward pass from Steven Mukwala, and the Black Stars was still. Handle possession here, ball into space. And Black Stars will break away with Ernest Tuama onto the path of Fatawi Sahaku. He has options, he tries to square that for Jordan Ayu. But then that pass wouldn't get to Ayu on time. Exactly what I was talking about the final decision, those passes. He needs, he really needs to, to check on the time because that pass to Jordan Ayu was very, very short and there was no way the captain was getting to that particular ball. There's a long one, Antoine Semenyo. Tries to control that, but then referee calls for a foul this time on Sikagande. And the cranes will have some breathing space and try to build something up. It's 33 minutes here at the start, Grand de Marrakesh. And it's the cranes of Uganda who are down by two goals to one against the Black Stars of Ghana. That's a long one over there. But then Bayou Fahad will keep possession for the Cranes. Mugabe. Long diagonal ball. But then it's in Bomono. Still in possession in Bomono. Fence of back challenge. Back to Mutuaba. That's Flick. Back. Mutuaba in possession. Goes back to find Semakula. Semakula. Oh no, that was a, just a disappointing effort. You could see what they were trying to do there, Uganda. They really love to attack using the right hand side of attack. They found so much joy on that side of, of the of the Ghana, you know, defense, and that is where they've been operating from because they, they realized that there's a lot of space between Ebenezer Anan and then Jerome Opoku. You realize at a point Jordan had to track back to even help in defense, in defending the box, but then again the surge on to attack again. And his motto is Uganda in the Ghana box. Dennis Odoi will quickly track back. But then it's still Mutuaba of Uganda tries to connect that one into the six yard. But then the ball, that pass was cut off, and the Black Stars will try to clear their lines. But then Uganda will still keep the pressure on the Black Stars. Mugabe in possession. Again, with another long ball trying to find Mbomono. The first touch, too long, and Ghana will break away. It's Salis. And that clearance, finally, from Jerome Koku. But then Uganda, once again, will recover this one. So the creators of Uganda, lovely skill. Final touch of Ebenezer Anand, and Uganda have it through. Samakula in possession. Samakula, lovely turn. But then to no one in particular. And that has been their bane this afternoon. Uganda, sometimes when they attack, looks like the decision making is always a problem for them. Elvis Mowono didn't get the test because he could have made that round and then received that particular ball. So, quite a number of changes made by Coach Otuado in this particular lineup. 
as compared to the one that played against Nigeria a couple of days ago, where you have the likes of Francis Abu, Fatou Isaac, with Beneza Anand, all starting, but then he maintained the centre back pairing of Edmund Addo and then also Jerome Opoku, which shows you the kind of stability and consistency he wants over there. But then the goalkeeper also has been changed with. Jojo Walakot starting this time round. Well, as, as for the goalkeeping department, I think it's one thing that Fatal Dauda and then the coach have to decide because there should be some consistency. You don't know if Atisigil will still remain number one or uh, 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 Jojo Walakot. And then again, you ask yourself, would Edwin Nado be playing in that defensive unit if Jiku is available, if Amati is, is, is available? So there are a lot of questions that uh, you know, we, we need to find out or ask going forward, but it's just a friendly and sometimes you get opportunity to try players in different uh, positions. But so far, I think that I've been impressed with what Edwin Nado has done in, in defense. Black Stars in possession, they find themselves in enemy territory. Francis Abu is just, he just hasn't put a foot wrong so far, but then in your shots as the head coach in his second stint and his second game, searching for his first win. Francis Abu with a lob over the defense, trying to find that's, that's Antoine Semenyor, but then the flag goes up from the assistant referee. He's been flagged offside, Semenyor. And then that wasn't a bad attempt in the run, timely run, but then he just took off a little bit too early. The Queens are beginning to push forward. It means that there will be a lot of gaps behind their defense where the blasters can exploit but then again that pass to find Antoine was too long and the timing of the round two was very bad. So it's Mugabe trying to locate Steven Mukwala which he perfectly does. Mukwala will hold up play for a while trying to cross that one to Rogers Mato in Bomono to Mato. Mato Trying to find that should be a foul. Mutiaba, but then a bit aggressive from Mutiaba on Jerome. But then you can see the mismatch over there, quite a mismatch in terms of height, but then very, very aggressive from Mutiaba. And that put Jerome on the turf, and he wins a free kick. And Black Stars will begin the attack just like they do always building up from the back that has been one of the key indications of a change in play and the coach Otuado in the second game Ebenezer Arnold Jordan Pierre Ayu a hard working Jordan Ayu finds Noama who is playing in that number 10 position to Dennis Odoi who has acres of space in front of him but then he checks back and he links up with Isahaku Francis Abu and then the ball ricochets off Sikaganda and Blasters will win a throw in. Then is Odoi. Throw in effective. And it's clearly the Blasters are really pushing Uganda backward. Playing with the high line this afternoon. Francis Abu, a one time pass to Jerome. Jerome to Ebenezer Arnold. Good move to move away from his marker. Can he move away from the second marker? Yes, he does swiftly. To Noama, can he shoot? Yes, he does. But then that pressure coming from Sikaganga makes it very, very difficult for him to direct that one on target. That was a very decent attempt by MS Noama. There was a lot of players right in front of him and the option for him to go a bit further before taking the shot was in there, but that wasn't a bad attempt. I want to see a lot of him within the edge of the ball. So he's not receiving a lot of the balls there because we are not going direct with the way we, we, we've played. But I want him to get himself involved into the game and try those strikes from outside just the boss and, and see how well it goes. All right, so it's Uganda in possession inside center circle. Good, strong challenge from Ed Monado. Comes out successful with that challenge. Very patient again. They move the Black Stars of Ghana. The last time they won a game was last year when they won against Madagascar at the death of that game. And it was in Naki Williams, who is not part of the squad due to injury concerns. 
So will they win for the first time in seven games? The Blasters of Ghana, the lead here in Marrakesh is Jordan Ayu. Tries to fake. Finds Nuama again, cuts onto his left foot, but then pressure from Uganda. Back to Jordan Ayu. He's pushed down, but then it's Rogers Mato who break away. And the Blasters backpedaling, trying to recover. Mutiaba into space. Back to Fahad. Fahad who tried to cross that one. Edmonado getting his defensive duties done strongly, but then just look at how strong he is, Jerome Opoku, and he wins that foul. Comes head to head again with Bayo Fahad, and it's Jerome Opoku who has, you know, the, the last laugh here. He's been winning the personal battles uh, between himself and then and then Bayo, but then again, you see how excellent Edmond had to recover the ball and then try and find Jerome. Uh, with that particular pass so far it's been it's been very good for for them and for for for, for the two players it's the second time they are playing together in that defensive partnership role but i must say that i've been impressed with the job they've done so far the center back pairing of the blasters showing so much promise and consistency edmund Ardo, naturally a midfielder but then he's been paired in the last two friendly games with jerome opoku who is also having a stellar season in the turkish top flight having scored four goals already on loan at Istanbul Basak Seher. Lovely pass over the top, trying to find Noama. No, that ball wouldn't go through. And it's Uganda again. They've loved attacking with the long balls this afternoon, trying to exploit the spaces. A hard challenge over the referee says play can continue. Yes, it does. And it's Ennis Noama. Couldn't just find a full grip, but then Anand will get that ball. Lovely pass on to. Seven yards feet, seven yards. Can he square that to the old Russian? No, he doesn't. But then that ball again. Abdul Fatawi Sahaku again looks disappointed with his own effort. Just looks to the skies and says, Ah, oh, did I just, or couldn't I just get this one on target? That was a very poor attempt from Fatawi Sahaku. But credit to the Cranes, they had to recover after Ebenezer and Anand cut that pass from Iwomono and, and for me I think that their, their urgency recovering to try and defend that ball was very very excellent but Fatal is a good about the third time he's been in a very decent position but his shot has always always not been on target he needs to work on that in this game. So a little bit of conversation between Tommy Carr the goalkeeper and centre-back Peter Sibic and then Black Stars again giving away a free kick Bayou Fahad he's worked diligently this afternoon very very hard working he's covered lots of ground this afternoon and Sikaganda who just rolled the ball to Mugabe who would restart play for the cranes of Uganda in Bomono moves away past Jordan Ayu returns the ball to Mugabe Sikaganda over the top, trying to locate Steven Desimukwala, who was on that dart and run, but then it's Dennis Odoi. Francis Abu, Dennis Odoi. Blasters keeping possession confidently inside their own box. Gerald Mokoku, he's been rock solid this afternoon. To Joe got back to Salis Samet. Lovely done, beautifully done by the Blasters. And they'll move away from that press. And that long pass to Ebenezer Anand. Lovely control. Ebenezer Anand still in possession. Enes Nuama. He's really had some highs and lows already in the first half in that hole right behind the striker this afternoon, Enes Nuama. And the Cranes will recover. Sikaganda, a long one trying to locate Steven Desemukwala, who will go head to head once again with Dennis Odoi, but he trips him and the Black Stars will win a free kick. It's been very impressive, impressive the way they've built from the back. I don't, I don't want to say maybe the, the cranes are not really pressing them, but the build-up from the back has been very, very excellent. I, I don't remember the last time I saw a Black Star team building from the back in a very confident manner, but I must say I've been very, very impressed. And I'm sure it is one of the reasons why Edmond Ado is playing in that particular defensive unit, because his distribution from or initiating attack from that defensive line has been very very solid 
so as the blasters of Ghana, but then confirmation of additional time for the first 45 minutes, and it's one minute that the number of minutes we'll be doing here at the Grand Stead D Marrakesh. Ebenezer Adam goes down, but then manages to keep possession, but then loses it very clumsy from him, but then wins He's the ball clearly. Yeah. And it's Nwama who can unleash something over here. Nwama, oh, again. Nwama couldn't dive that one on target again. And he hasn't made Tommy Kara work at all this afternoon. But this is better attempt from the previous ones that is is hard. And I love the fact that immediately he got to the ball, he had to pick a spot within the goalpost, and that was a very close attempt from Ernest Nyama. So it's the cranes. A huge let off for them. And they keep that two one deficit still intact. And then six seconds. And the referee could blow the whistle anytime soon. And it's Ebenezer Arnold to Semenyok. And you could see Bomono and also Peter Civic doing the job on him. But then the whistle has gone for the end of the first half here. And it start Grand de Marrakesh in Morocco where it's the Africa Week celebrations that continue and the African teams keep enjoying themselves with some friendly games this time round is the cranes of Uganda up against Ghana and the Ghanaians are in firm control of this tie. It's 2-1 Ghana lead over here. Ghana taking the lead very, very early in this game. But then the Ugandans will draw level through Desen Pukwala, the 24-year-old who plays for Asante Kotoko in the Ghana Premier League. But then the Blasters will just show some grit and hunger after Dennis Odo was stripped in the box and Jordan Pierre Ayou made it four goals in his last three games for the Blasters of Ghana, making no mistake at all from 12 yards. It's been quite a very decent game for both sides. You won't say it's been excellent or extraordinary, but I think that we've had we've seen some decent 45 minutes from both teams. Uh, fewer chances have been created. No, not surprising that the, out of the three goals that were scored, two were from the penalty uh, spots. I've been impressed with the way the Blasters have built the attack from the back, you know, even with Jojo Wallockett including or uh, giving himself out to, to receive and also initiate attack. So it's been a very decent opening for the five minutes for the two teams. And I, I, I can tell you that the second half, it won't be, it will be that, that close because the Cranes will want to come back and get an equalizer as, as quickly as possible in the second half. But so far, it's been a decent performance from the Blasters. Really, blemish i could say has been on our right side of defense where ebenezer Anan has been you know operating the Ugand the cranes have found a lot of luxury working on that side so it's been a decent but yet electric first for five minutes here at the start grand deep marrakesh in marrakesh where the blasters of ghana have a 2-1 lead over the cranes of uganda steven desi mukwala scoring for uganda but then it was jerome Opoku and jordan are you from the sport scoring at either side of that Dese Mukwala goal for Uganda. So, after the first 45 minutes here in Morocco, it's Ghana 2, Uganda 1. I am a passionate home cook and a recipe developer with many years of experience. People
Bit of a nice surprise. The Black Stars leading by two goals to one this half time will make it very snappy. I'm here with Nana Edu. It looks like uh, Jerome Opoku got that goal. I'm not too sure if it was an own goal by Desimu Kuala, who got the equaliser before Jordan Ayu also got the Black Stars ahead from the penalty spot. It hasn't been uh, too smooth, but being in the lead is what you're looking for. Perhaps at this point, uh, not the performance. Both sides haven't really glittered or shunned, but at least uh, the Black Stars are in lead. Nana? I think that is what most Ghanaians want, want to see. The new Black Stars. You know. Oh, it's the new Black Stars? That is what we are talking about. <laughs> who says who? <laughs> because of what happened at the, 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 the recent AFCON, people thought you know, we need to do some changes within the team. So a new coach, a new backroom staffs. And in recent times, we've been complaining about players, Right, okay. Well, I mean, uh, the statistics will come in through, obviously. Uganda uh, will feel that they should have had two penalties. We'll see We'll see the replay in just a second. And also, who scored the first goal? Uh, Jerome Opoku, the Turkish-based lad, claiming that. Whether or not it was him, we'll see very, very shortly. But let's just remind you that it is Africa Week in Marrakesh, Morocco, where the likes of uh, Mali, Ghana, and Nigeria, uh, Uganda, obviously, uh, are all in action. They're being hosted by the Moroccans. They will be the hosts for the next AFCON, which will be played, um, uh, which of course will be hosted by, by the Moroccans. So it's an exercise for them to see how best they can also take um, a look at their venues. Unfortunately, no fans. That's why the, the stadiums have been uh, empty so far. And of course, the Black Stars uh, lost 2 1 to Nigeria in that first game. Jordan, are you on the score sheet? And again here. But let's take a look at the positives, shall we? It's not always about, you know, the results is yeah. about the performance against Nigeria. I think Coach Otoado said he had a lot of positives. It's only 45 minutes, so we can't really come to a quick conclusion. He might even make a lot of changes in the second half. But what has impressed you about those who started this game? Yeah, when you look at it in recent times, when we go for you know international friendly and stuffs, we still use our normal players that we've been seeing in qualifiers and tournaments, the likes of Kudus and all these players who will be in the friendly match squad. And when you look at today's game, a lot of players uh, are getting the opportunity to show what they can do for, for the Blasters. You know, the likes of Ernest Nyama struggled to get into the starting lineup for the Blasters of Ghana. Uh, players like, you know, uh, Eben Zaban playing some in today's game, you know, quality player in the midfield. Francis Abu also doing well in the team. Jerome Opoku, one of the highest scoring defenders in Europe, already scoring three goals in the Turkish league. Getting this, you know, opportunities in the last start, and of course, scoring today in a game against Uganda. So these are what people are calling for. When you call these players, give them opportunities to show what they can do within the team, and that is what we are seeing these boys getting. At least we can see some positive compared to what we saw in the last Afcon. The last Afcon, we struggle to to find a pattern for the team, and you can see in this Friday match there is a pattern. There is a rehearsed pattern. You can see they were playing to the coach. Instruction and that is working for them. At really? Least right from the back. We start as a you know, ball playing defenders moving to the midfield to the attack. So you can see. Uh, you they think are playing. it's very visible in this game in 45 minutes? You've and seen that. Uganda and staffs are some of these games that you can use to assess some of these players. So it's a big opportunity for some of these players to excel. On a good day, the likes of Kudus, the likes of Kamar Jean, the likes of you know, uh, Mohamed Salisu, Alexander Jiku. Gideon Mensah or Baba Rahman will come for their position. So when you get the opportunity to play in the Blasters master stance now, you also show what you can offer when you're given opportunity to play for the Blasters. And that is what the players are doing. Now we can make a case for a player like Jerome Bopoku. In recent times, we thought we had only one left-footed central defender in Mohamed Salusu. Now Jerome Bopoku can give competition to Mohamed Salusu in that particular position. We didn't know Edmond Ado could play as a central defender. The last two games, the friendly match against Nigeria in today's game, Edmond Ado is being played as a central defender in the games that we've been playing. So it tells you the coach is trying to make sure he brings the best out of some of these players. Remember the last friendly game? Ali Bisedu played as a left-sided central defender. You're talking about against half, Nigeria. Against Nigeria. So you can see he's using the two games to assess some of these players within the team. Look at a player like Abdul Sade Samet. We always complain about pairing him with the Igris the, Baba. They are two defensive midfielders. Today, it, uh, Abdul Sanis is playing the whole, and of course, Francis Abu is playing the advanced role with Ernest Nyama as a typical number 10. 
Abdul Fattah is It's been a long time you saw him playing for the Blasters of Ghana. So I think it's the best opportunity for some of these coaches to assess the players who struggle to get into the first level of the Blasters. Mm. Uh, of course, Jordan captain for the second time. Uh, impressed with this performance so far? I'm happy for him. The last four goals for the Blasters. You know, I think the last three games, the last game at the AFCON, the game against Nigeria and today's game, Jordan has scored four goals in three games for the Blasters, in which entire happened to Jordan Ayo. Look at his records with the national team. He's played close to 100 games for the Blasters, only up to even 25 goals for the Blasters. He's, he's not a big boy. He's not one of the so senior now, players. After the day, Ayo, he's the longest seven Blaster player in the team. So it tells you he's gathering confidence within the team and everyone going forward to help the national team. So I'm happy for him. Now the free kick experts, corner kicks, and penalty, an expert in the team. He's the first choice penalty taker within the Blasters, and I'm happy for his development, how he has grown within the team. Yeah, let's take a look at the goal again. The, 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 the Ugandan defense seemed to be flat footed. They were caught, you know, ball watching. And it was bundled in. If you know, if it was indeed it wasn't an own goal. We thought initially it might have yeah. been an own goal, but um, Opoku, General Opoku was right there as the man who finally put it in. But the defenders were caught flat. There you go. Yeah, he just walked that. He just walked that through. They didn't. They didn't pick him up. Yeah, came yeah, in from yeah, the back. Yeah, 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 that was a smart move. And we had this call from set pieces, whether a corner kick or a free kick. So it's something that we can see. It's an improvement within the Blasters team. From us to score from a corner kick, I'm happy for the central defender, Jerome Opoku, a left-footed central defender who has been introduced into the team. And I think his performance in, in the second half against Nigeria in today's game, gradually is warming himself into the Blasters team. Goalkeeper, goalkeeper in the department, uh, Jojo Wallacott being given a uh, call. He was once upon a time the number one yeah. for Otoado. He takes his spot back. Because it was injury that yeah. prevented him from him out of for the, the World, World Cup. Cup. Yeah, and Lawrence Atiziki took over. In the last AFCON, it was with Lofori. Right. The game against Nigeria, it was Lawrence Atiziki. Today is Jojo Walako. So I'm happy for him to come back into the pools. It, 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 it's a nice competition between him and Lawrence Atiziki as to who will be the number one goalkeeper for the Blaster. The referee had denied Uganda first, you know. Uh, your man, Desi Mukwala getting his goal, the Kotoko boy. Obviously, the Porcupine Warriors Already are, are playing 13 him. games for the Uganda national team. He was here to score. And a game against Nigeria, a Ghana, a country that he's playing his club football in. He scored against Ghana. Massive achievement for Steven Mukwala for Asante Kotoko. He's been a bit off since then. After the goal, he's been a bit... Um, uh, he's vanished. Yeah, what, the, the, the Uganda goes? team, you know, they don't create a lot of opportunities up front. Then they were. They were playing. And, and, they played. And, but they are playing good football. And I think maybe in the second half, when they introduce one or two players from the bench, we can see the best out of Simu Kualaba. For you're, the you're, first time, he was a little bit slow. The, the defensive setup at a point looks a little bit unsettled. That's an almost yes, sure about the movement. Okay, they, they'll be starting the second half in a bit, not yet, uh, a few minutes. Uh, some changes being made by the Ugandans. Perhaps Otto Ado would do similar. At, at, at a couple of points, you realize that perhaps a, a bit of indecision, you know, on the part of the, the Ghanaian defense. But they've only conceded one, so yeah, they will not That complain. is why I want to see some changes in the second half. Such as? Mohamed Salusu is there. He can come in the second half. The Mediama guy, Kamal Dini, is also there. He can come in the second half. Your own, uh, Brighton and Hosa, we right back. You know, Tarek Lamte is one of the players in the team who can also come in and be slaughtered in that department. Patrick Pozo, the left back, is also on the bench who can come in the second half. Idris Baba. Is one of the players forcing a man of Red Bull Salzburg. Some of these players, I think they need to give them opportunity to also showcase what they can do for the Blasters of Ghana. Yeah, this referee that she was quick to point to the spot, you know, uh, Odoe's move confused the defenders and rightly uh, she awarded a penalty. Jordan making no mistake from the spot. Uh, the goalkeeper guessed right, but it was not fast enough. It's 2-1. There's a lot to happen in the second half, no doubt about it. And indeed, the second half is underway.
at the Grand Start the Marrakesh in Morocco where is the Blasters of Ghana leading the Cranes of Uganda by two goals to one. Jerome Opoku putting the Blasters ahead before Steven Desse Bukwala drawing parity for the Ugandans but then it was Jordan Pierre Ayou with his fourth goal in three games for the Blasters that put them two up going into the intermission and they have the ball now in the second half but then it's Ikara who deals comfortably with that one a promising long ball diagonally, but then the Blasters attack Antoine Semenyot just couldn't get at the end of that one. And it's the Cranes who have effected a change already coming into the second half. And we will be confirming that change for you. But then I'm in commentary position with my colleague, my co commentator, Felix Rumak. Yeah, uh, those are talking about a change for the Cranes of Uganda. Uh, Abdul Karim Watabanla comes on for Travis Butiaba, and so that's the change for the second half. I'm expecting the same pattern, the same tactics that the Blasters were playing in the opening 45 minutes of the game, building up from the back, trying to create a lot of chances from the flanks. For the, for the Ugandans, I'm sure that they still want to go to the right side of the Ghanaian attack where they found a lot of joy in terms of how they attack the team. But so far, it's been a very impressive opening for the fight for the Ghanaians, and I'm expecting them to still continue with that, hold on to the onto possession, but I'm expecting a better decision making when they get into the final third. Jojo Walla caught under pressure, but then he clears that one. And last touch comes off. Sikaganga and the Black Stars of Ghana would have it through, but then referee says it should go the way of the Cranes and it's Francis Abu with some defending and Coach Otuado just can't believe that decision go, couldn't go the way of his team and some protest from him and then it's the Cranes throwing defected Cleared. Steven Bukwala who had that one but was trying to find Payu Fahad and then great strength shown by Edmond Ado and coach Utuado a bit edged over there and in that game against Nigeria you could see how he poured out his frustration due to some decisions not going his way and also eventually his centre-back, Jerome Mopoku, getting himself sent off for a violent challenge. It's Francis Abu, who's been decent, tries to locate Dennis Odoi. And with just two passes, it looks like the Black Stars have been able to advance into the third half. Francis Abu back to Abu. Abu to Isahaku. Isahaku tries to find Antoine Semenyo. Will get this one target? No, he does it. Antoine Semenyo from close range could have doubled Ghana's lead. But then he failed to do that. But then there is a Ugandan on the test, and it's is it Karim Watambala, player who just got on for the craze of Uganda but then earlier on was a golden opportunity for Antoine Semenyor to double the lead for the Black Stars of Ghana. But, but it was a very fantastic pass from Abdul Fattah Isaku and, and an awful finish I must say from Antoine Semenyor. We've seen him you know week in week out getting into positions like this at the bottom of and burying the ball at the back of the net. That was an awful finish. I was thinking that he might want to take a fair start, find some space on the left side of the post and then place the ball over there. But the decision to instantly go with that strike was a very awful one from an established Premier League striker like Antoine uh, Semenyo. By his standards, he shouldn't be missing that. A couple of weeks ago, he was on fire when they came from his team, Bournemouth, came from three goals down to beat Luton 4-3 at the Vitality Stadium and he was unplayable on that day but then in your shot is the coach for the Cranes 
of Uganda. I don't know if it's he's playing under pressure whenever he wears the Blasters jersey because we've seen him in a, in a similar position, the 18 yard boss. I quite remember the game against Comoros, away in Comoros, and then even at the AFCON, we saw, we saw him in a similar position, but he failed to find the back of the net. So, play would restart. And there's the Blasters of Ghana trying to win the ball, and they do that without any hesitation. Salis. Francis Abu. And both end, he and his double pivot partner haven't put a foot wrong this afternoon. It looks like he's relishing that partnership with Salis Samet, who occasionally plays in that role with Arsenal's Thomas Party, who is currently not with the team due to some injury concerns. And he's still nursing an injury. He's not back for a long time. And he wouldn't be rushing to playing for the Blasters of Ghana. Of course, and it's also important, I'm sure, that Arsenal have communicated with the Blasters, looking at how tight the fishes are in the position where they find themselves on the English Premier League. Look, they will want to see most of their players fit in helping them have a very successful season. So it's Uganda. But then they will lose possession again. And Salis will just nick that one to walk Wallacott. Ebenezer Anand had some very, very you no know, straining spells in the first half. Ebenezer Anand causing that penalty that Steven Mukwala dispatched. But then Francis Abu will search forward, finds Antoine Semenyo. Still the Black Stars in possession and Semenyo dropping a bit deeper to enjoy play for a while. Ebenezer Anand. He's been forced to go back, but then he loses possession cheaply and the Cranes would lack to attack from the right-hand side. Still the Cranes in possession. Simakula finds his teammate Mugabe. Kaka Omoni. Kaka Omoni still in possession. Moves infield. Locates Sikaganda, Semakula tries to go wide, but then Uganda will still retain possession. This could be dangerous for the Blasters. Can he send in a cross? Can he send in a cross? No, still in possession, Uganda, but then over elaboration on the part of Uganda, and that was a wasteful opportunity. They could have gotten something better out of it. He was doing way too many with the ball. There were a lot of Ugandan players in the 18-yard box waiting for the ball. For the instant, I thought that when he had gone past, you know, Anna, he should have sent the ball directly into the 18-yard box for the players in there to attack. But he wasted too many, you know, uh, too much time on the, on the ball. So is the Cranes still trying to find the equalizer after going behind for the second time in this game, Jordan, Jordan Ayu's penalty giving the Blasters a very slim advantage in this particular friendly here at the grand, grand start, the Marrakesh. Semakula. Uganda will win themselves a throw it. If we should take a walk back memory lane, these two teams played in the Afghan final when Ghana hosted a tournament in 1978 where the Black Stars beat them by two goals to zero, and both goals scored by Opokwe Frie in the 38th and the 64th minute, and that was the Cranes' best finish ever in an AFCON tournament. Well, and if you talk about recent times, a few days ago in the African Games, we saw a Ghana-Uganda, you know, in that final for, for a gold place, and a certain Frie getting the winning goal for the Black, uh, the Ghana U20 team. And Uganda had quite an impressive team at the African Games, you know, being the same goal with Senegal and Nigeria and qualifying into the, the finals of, the, of, of this year's African Games tells you how well their football is developing. And in this particular game, they haven't been that bad. They've created a bit of decent chances on, 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 on their own. And I'm sure that it is something that they would be, 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 be proud of so far in this particular game. It's still about 35 minutes more to go, and I'm sure they want to go out there and fight for that equalizer. So the last five games between Ghana and Uganda have seen both teams pick up one wins apiece and the remaining three 
and then in stalemate. So it's a bit cagey when these two teams come together whenever they meet in any tournament at all. And then looking at the FIFA rankings as well, it looks like the Ghanaians are some 25 places above the Ugandans. Strong clearance from Uganda. That head up, and then the ball will fall to Bessie Mukwala. Can he find his teammate? No. And a clearance a header from Gerald Poku. But then, as the Ugandans still on the attack, trying to knock on the door, asking some questions. Now, the header again being cleared at Bodado, and then another header from Fatali Saha with a return ball too strong. And Jojo Wallacott will gather that for the Black Stars. I don't know why the, 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 the cranes are going with those long balls. In terms of the central defense, Ghana have the height to deal with so, such balls. So I, I'm a bit surprised that they are trying to go with those long balls instead of getting the ball on the ground and passing their way or creating channels for themselves and then getting to the, the final third of the, of the Blasters' defense. It's Francis Abu, the young star, to Dennis Odoi. That header downwards for Salis. Lovely turn. Has two Ugandan players running into each other. Ghana still with possession. And Noama will drop deep, try to orchestrate things. Edmond Ado. I personally haven't been impressed with Niyama and that number 10 I, I'm, I'm thinking he's very good when he's playing on those wide areas for the team. But maybe the coach wants to try him in those in that number 10 rule, but it's been difficult for him to exploit his speed in, 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 in that particular position because he's not somebody who loves to do those short passes as well. So I'm a bit surprised, but I think that it would be better for him if he gets into those wide areas. So it's Antoine Semenyot showing some strength over there, but then the Black Stars will eventually lose that ball. Kenneth Semakula will try to find Mbowono. Manages to keep that in play, and Uganda would love to keep the ball and build up at the stage. Semakula, a long one over the top, you know, trying to find Bayo Fahad, ball intercepted. So Uganda trying to move forward. Semakula tries to drive, tries, trying to tread this one inside, and it's Mukwala who releases his teammate. At the far right hand side, it's still Uganda trying to build the momentum here. A long one onto the path of Bayo. He'll have this one. The tip from Jojo Wallop for the return ball, but then ricochets off the Blasters defender. Dangerous for the Ghana Blasters. And the Prince of Uganda nearly, nearly drawing level once again of a second time in this game. But then the Black Stars, they were very, very fortunate they didn't concede from that. Good that job was an excellent, from excellent save from Jojo. Wallacott. Sometimes when the goalkeepers find themselves in the net and they are not being put into active use, and you need to keep your concentration. I must say that it was spot on with that. And that was a very, very excellent save to deny uh, the Ugandans the second goal in this game. Excellent save from Jojo Wallacott. So Wallacott had to do that at full stretch. Denied Bayo for hard. Who really made him work on that occasion. But then it's Kakao Moni Dennis with a cross, the in swinger, Bayo again the target, the second header again, but then Uganda who missed from close range. They've really had some golden opportunities to draw level, to draw parity here in Marrakesh. But then it's the blasters of Ghana living dangerously in the last three minutes. Awful defending from that corner kick. They were all over the place and a Dugana should have punished the Blasters for that particular you know, uh, lapses in defense. That was a very decent opportunity for them. The Black Stars will give the ball away cheaply again. And it's Uganda. And referee whistles for a foul on Francis Abu. That was a late call. But then the right one from the referee. I'm sure the referee wanted to give a Ghanaian advantage for that. But Salis couldn't get the ball. He, she had to recall the foul on Francis Abu. Referee L. El Fari comes up, 34 years. She officiates in the Morocco Professional Botola, the top flight football league in Morocco. She also 
officiated in last year's Youth World Cup in Argentina. And then it's the Black Stars now with Ed Monado. A long one into the channel. Tries to locate Isaac, goes past his marker with the skill. And what's the referee's verdict? And it's a goal kick to the cranes of Uganda. And there were some heavy downpours this morning. And a couple of changes waiting to be effected by Coach Otuado. And on that touchline, you could see Ali Dusedu, who played in two different positions in that game against Nigeria, right back, and then later on as a left back. But then you'll be wondering how the substitutions could affect or impact the system of the Black Stars so far. I won't be surprised if he gets into the right back position with that particular. I think that for Edmond Nado and then Jerome Opoku, he would want to stick with that particular this defensive duo. So I don't see Ali Di going to that central defense. He will surely be playing in that right back position. Jordan, are you? That ball earlier on into space for him from Ebenezer Anand, very strong in possession. Still manages to keep possession for the Black Stars. And in the last two games he's played, including this one, there's been strict instructions because he covers so much ground whenever his team has some defending to do. It's been very, very hard working, and that's one of the reasons why he's never lost his place at Crystal Palace. It's Noama advancing into space. For Isahaku, checks onto his left foot. Not Max, Isahaku, still with the ball, but then lovely challenge, a timely one from Ronald Sikiganga. You need to keep your concentration level high in the box when you are making those tackles. And that was a very excellent defending from Sikiganga. But then some substitutions will be made and some fresh legs will be thrown in by head coach Otuado, still searching for his first win. In his second stint, the last friendly game here in Marrakesh just didn't go the way he had wanted after the Black Stars lost narrowly to the Super Eagles of Nigeria by two goals to one. And it's Noama who effect this. So I think the substitutions will have to hold on for a while. The in swinger, a bit of a collision over there. What will referee say? He says, play on. It's seven up. But then Edwin Ado's shot will just come off the crane defender. They will just balloon that one out of danger. And the Black Stars nearly punishing the cranes of Uganda for that loss in concentration in a split second. But then the Black Stars in possession now. Another long ball, which has really worked for them today. Knocked down by Noama. But then Noama, Noama in an offside position and. The assistant referee just had that right. That was spot on. And Ghana gets to make those changes. So changes for the Blasters of Ghana, where Tyke Lamte will be coming on for Dennis Odoi. For Sinamankwa also getting ready to come on. And he is going to take the place of Abu Francis. So Abu Francis also makes way. Abu Francis makes way for Forsen Amankwa. And then also Noama, who has really struggled this afternoon in that number 10 role. And Ali Dusedu also joins the frame. And then Edmond Ado also out. So four straight substitutions on a trot. For the Blasters of Ghana, and earlier we were talking about how that could change the way they are playing because Fos Namankwa has come on for Nuama, Tyke Lamte replaced Dennis Odoi. You also have Ali Dusedu also coming on. So, quite a number of changes for the Blasters, and would this strengthen them going into the last 25 minutes? I'm sure he want to change a bit of the tactics, especially with his back four. I won't be surprised to see you know, the team using more of the flanks. And then with Norma out of that number 10 position, I don't know if Jordan might be drafted into that particular area. And then Edmond Ado also coming in 
in that in, in that uh, midfield midfield role. So I'm sure he might want to change a bit of the way the team have attacked the uh, offensively, and that has informed the decision why he's bringing on those players. So four substitutions for the Black Stars. Salisu also taking the place of Edmond Addo, which means that the Black Stars of Ghana will be playing with two left-footed centre-backs for the remaining game. But then, temporary hold-up, because Dennis Kaka Omoni would receive treatment. So it's 67 minutes gone here at the start. Grand. The Marrakesh where is the Blasters of Ghana taking on the craze of Uganda. And the Blasters still hanging on that narrow lead. Two goals to one, the lead over here. All the goals coming in the first half. No goals seen in the second period. With over 20 minutes left to play here. Ebenezer Arnold. Salis. To Ali Dusaidu. Tries to go past his marker, force it, Amankwa, but then no, he misses that ball. But then Steven Destin will like a hard challenge from Ali Dusaidu, and this is what he's been known for. A typical Ali Dusaidu. Uh, Strong, robust Seydou defender. Defense. What's going on? Doesn't give any quarter at all, but then there's this fracas happening where already it looks like Sally Soup, Gerald, Opoku, all in the mix. But then what will be the decision from? The centre referee, El Fari comes up, and as you can see, the Black Stars would have to keep their composure and discipline because in their last game against Nigeria, they had a man sent off which really went against them after they had to play the rest of the game. Close to 40 minutes with no, with the numerical disadvantage, and Salis who just coming on has received the yellow card, and then also Rogers Kasimato of Uganda also receiving the yellow card and some follow-up instructions also from the referee El Fari comes up. Salis needs to be very very careful especially when you are a central defender and already on a booking it, it, it has to he has to be very very wary of to go into challenges that can result in another another booking especially when you are coming back from a, a game that you had one player sent off that was a game against Nigeria it needs to be mindful of what kind of tackles he will go in after this particular uh, yellow card. All right, so substitution made by Uganda with two players coming on. Moses Aliro coming on for the injured Dennis Kaka Omoni, and then also Jackson Mohammed also coming on to join the Ugandan team. It's Uganda in possession. Mugabe clears that one towards the centre circle. It's Salisu. But then the trip on Jordan Ayu and the Blasters of Ghana win themselves a free kick just after this the the, the centre circle and there you can see it's Jordan Ayu and then he gets up on his feet. So that's the man, the Belgian international, the head coach of the Cranes of Uganda, Paul Put, the 67-year-old who has had so many stains with several African countries. But then it's Ali who wins the throwing. And it looks like after those changes, the Black Stars have reverted to a three-back system where Ty Clamte is playing as a right wing back and forcing. Ebenezer Anand has moved to the left wing back row, but then Isaha tries the ball, finds that point seven, you know, keeps possession. Ty Lante has blistering pace. Still, Semenyo to Isaha, can you unleash one? No. Finds Salisu on his weaker right foot, locates Ty Lante, moves past his marker. He has so much speed. Ty Lante, a little bit of dummy over there, moves the ball in foot, no, over the head of Antoine Semenyo, but then good recovery work 
by Mohamed Sansu Blasters will retain possession. Ali Vusedu and Salis. And you can see how they are just running rings around the Ugandan players with so much confidence. Forcing a manqua. Wow, he cook possession. That was a lovely move. A dummy to send almost three Ugandan players the wrong way. But then the touch on him and the Blasters would win a free kick. A lot of people within the Ghanaian media space have been calling for forcing Amankwa to be given the opportunity to, to play for the Blasters. And so far, I think he's been very good in the way he's, he's played. Forcing Amankwa just coming on a couple of minutes ago and showing glimpses of and what Giza, he has. I, I don't know if those players that didn't make the call up due to injury or trying to keep their fitness. I don't know if they have to be worried because sometimes when you get this opportunity and you get to impress a coach, getting to drop you in the next call-up will be a very difficult challenge for him, especially when he saw what you've given him in those two friendly games. So if you are not here, there are some players that you might not say they won't get opportunity again, but you should be worried if you are not here and these players are, are playing such wonderful uh, you know, football in front of, uh, of the coach and then in front of Ghanaians who are watching and see how Mario excellent Fahad they are. The cranes of Uganda just sniffing around the penalty area of the Blasters. Lovely touch from Fatawi Sahafu. Goes down under a strong challenge and the Blasters win. A free kick in their own half. And then Isahaku, what a player he is turning out to be for Leicester this season. After not joining the team for the recent AFCON, kept his place in the Leicester team, powered them to first place in the championship. And it looks like chances of qualifying back to the Premier League is much alive. I, 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 I'll be surprised if they don't qualify, but I'll be very, very excited to see Fatah Isahaku playing in the, in the Premier League. And, and what a way it will be within the space of you know, four years from playing Division One football in the Ghana, in Ghana, and then straight into the Premier League, which will be a very remarkable achievement for uh, Abdul Fatah Isaku. Jordan Ayu loses possession cheaply, and it's the Cranes who move forward. And it's Jadassin Mohamed, well, I'm short, trying to locate the space between Walcott's legs, but then he goes down so well and deals with that. I don't know if I should say it was a poor finish or good goalkeeping from uh, 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 Jojo Walakot because be you, you, <laughs> you, you look at Ronald uh, Sikigama, he had a lot of options. He had a lot of time to hold on to the ball and find a, a, a placement for that. But let's not take anything away from Jojo Walakot. That has been very, very, that was a very good you know, save from, from, from him. And especially when he hasn't been put under a lot of pressure. But you look at the two crucial saves that he's made in this game, I must say it's, it's, it's been spot on. So Jojo Walakot, the Hibernian goalkeeper, keeping Ghana's narrow lead still intact for them. They lead 2-1 here in Marrakesh, but then the Ugandans aren't going down easily. They aren't going down without putting up a fight. And you can see a sense of urgency and a lot of they are playing with. Ball took Moses a little. But then the ball will go up. And it's Tariq Lamte. Really battled injuries in the last couple of years. The youngster who plays under one of the best coaches in Europe. Plays for Brighton and Rover Albion. And that Roberto Di Zerbi. And whenever he's fit, he trusts that his name will be on the team sheet in any Premier League match day. And then that ball is lost cheaply. Last pass in possession, Ali Dusaydu to Tariq. That is his last pass was off the Ghanaian. So it's a throw it to the Cranes of Uganda. Kenneth Samakula with a throw it. Then you can see it's Salis with his arms but the free kick has been what awarded against him that's a bit surprising and you'd be thinking that the arms of the ugandan came off the face yeah. of salis exactly but then he's still surprised looking at his reaction he was thinking that free kick should have gone his way but then to his dismay 
the free kick is being awarded to the Cranes of Uganda. And at Moses Zaliru behind the ball, also with Abdul Karim Watambala. The two substitutes will be combining, sharing ideas as to how to effect this one dangerously. Watambama with that cross, targeting Bayo at the far end. And Bayo win Uganda a throw it. Quickly take it. Good charge from Antoine Seven, the Bournemouth striker. Lays one down for his teammate. What can he do? Goes past his teammate, Isahaku. Can he finish that? No. Good defending. Good defending from Kenneth C. Mukula. That was excellent defending. But he realized that the Blasters were out there trying to defend that set piece, so they did not have the numbness you know, to attack when uh, Antoine Semenyon got on that counter attacking. But I shouldn't take anything away from the Ugandan. That was a very good defending from Kenneth C. Mukula. Excellent defending. So Kenneth Mukula doing harness. To his defensive duties on that occasion, but then they'll love to break away a long ball, no to no one in particular, intercepted by Sally Sweat. The Black Stars will keep calm under possession. They have really slowed the tempo in the second half, they've not played with that urgency, and it looks like they are just trying to keep their shape and protect the lead. The Black Stars. The build-up has been very, very slow. The passing pattern has been excellent, but there is no intensity like we saw in the opening 45 minutes of, of, of the game. They've slowed the tempo, which is a bit surprising for me. I think we've lacked a bit of you no know, intensity with the way we've passed and tried to, to 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 progress and send those progressive passes in the second half. And I haven't seen a lot of un uh, Jordan Ayu in the in this in this second half of of, of the game. All right, so you just mentioned his name, and it looks like he's done for the day. Jordan Ayu, the captain of the side. And he's not only going to give away his place to his senior brother, but then also he'll be giving away the armband as well as Andre Pierre Ayu. Andre Dede Ayu, if I should put it, tries to make way. But then Isaha, lovely nutmeg, but then gives the ball away. Strong clearance from the Queens of Uganda. The header from Bayou. And then strong character being displayed there by Jerome Poku. And it's not surprising that he's already one of the best defenders in the Turkish top flight this season. Of course, and in the, in, in, in the game that he's played to, to the, this afternoon, he's been very, very excellent. His passing, build up from the back has been solid. He's defended on one on one situation, he's been very, very good. And to cap that, he has a goal also in this game. He's been one of the best players for the, for the Ghana team in this game. Jerome Opoku on loan from Rio Ave in the Portuguese league, playing for Istanbul Basak Seher. And he's been great for his lone club this season. The clearance from Kenneth Semakula. But then he will be heckled by Jadassin Mohammed. Ali Dusaidu who always come out on top in those duels. That's a poor pass from Ali Du. You could see that Salis had opened up to receive that you know, pass, that option for him you know, getting the ball to. Audrey, uh, 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 what's the name? Tariq was, was a bad option. And that is why you could see why Salis was complaining. I should have received that ball, do the overturn, and then get into an offensive position. Black Stars of Ghana leading the Cranes of Uganda by two goals to one. We're just 10 minutes of regulation time to go here. Ali Seydou to effect the throw in for the Black Stars. But then a vital touch from the defender. And the blaster still advancing that ball. But then a strong clearance again. The vital touch again from Jagerson. Was he tripped? The referee says yes, he was tripped. And Fawcett will be warned by the referee. But then the captain of the side taking the place of his brother for the remaining few minutes in this time. 
he didn't play at all in that game against Nigeria. But then he's also having a stellar season with Le Havre in the French Ligue 1. Well, for some of the players, you know, you already know their capabilities, you know what they bring to your team. So if you're, they're not getting a lot of minutes in friendly games, it shouldn't be a worry. And you could see the lineup from the first game against Nigeria in this particular game. Otuado is trying to give you know, a lot of minutes and a, an opportunity to players that he has hardly you know, picked or played for Ghana before. And that is what we are seeing with the type, type of lineup and then the team you know, that he's put up. Very dangerous, but that's the flick! A goal. It's a scrappy goal, yes it is, but then they wouldn't care because it's a goal nonetheless. And it's the Blackstars who are voiced out their protest and frustration here, but then it's the trainers who are still celebrating that goal. The last touch coming off, Jagerson Mohammed. Call it scrappy if you like, but then the Cranes wouldn't care. I want to check if the ball actually crossed the line, the whole circumference of the ball, got, but initially it was a very excellent save from Jojo Wallacott. But then the rebound after the ball came off the crossbar, did it cross the line? Oh, it and is that's so where difficult. the question is. It is so Roman, difficult. That's where the question yeah. is. Does it cross the line? And it looks like something has been done. No, the goal and to, stands. And to be fair, it was actually the assistant referee who alerted the referee that the ball has crossed uh, the line. Uh, so sorry, from where we are, we couldn't get a better angle. With of a the deficit ball. of that camera angle, it would be very, very difficult. But then the last say had to come from the assistant referee, Edward Jelly Isani. And he says it's, it's a goal, and the goal stands. 83 minutes played here in Marrakesh is the Cranes of Uganda 2, the Black Stars of Ghana 2. And if the scoreline should stay this way, it means the Black Stars of Ghana would have gone eight games without a win. And that is not good for their pedigree. Well, and, and, and even for the mentality of the team. You know, sometimes for teams, you need to win games to make sure that you are building that uh, 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 mentality of, of, of picking up wins in games and so far it's been difficult for the Blasters but thankfully this is a friendly I'm sure that the mistakes that we've witnessed in the two friendly games would be work on going into that crucial World Cup qualifier against Mali. So here in Marrakesh and Conservation Blasters are winless in their last six games spanning to 21st November 2023 when they lost to Comoros in the World Cup qualifier. But in proud to that game, they had won by Inaki Williams' stop, stop a time goal against Madagascar. So the Black Stars are still searching for a win in 2024. But then for Coach Otuado, there's more pressure because it's in a second stint, he's still winless in two friendly games if the scoreline should stay this way after losing to Nigeria a couple of days ago. But then the Black Stars would love to turn the heat on, they would love to take the game to the Ugandans, show caution to the wind, take all the risk and see if it pays off for them. Strong clearance, showing to the Blasters of Ghana, who are beginning to send more men forward. Ali Dusseli, to take this one. You ask yourself, where was this intensity when the game started in the second half? The build-up has been slow, but immediately they consider the second goal, they've tried to increase their tempo of the game and then how quick they want to respond in terms of creating an attack. Seven up will mid, move to midfield, find Amakwa, but then that was an awful pass. And some defending to do here by Jerome Okoku to his goalkeeper. And that pressure from Bayo and nearly influenced Jojo Walako to overhead that one. But then it's Ali Dusebi, strong. But then gives away a very cheap foul. That was so unnecessary, especially when you had forcing a man back in there to cover up for you. So the Black Stars of Ghana have a little over four minutes plus added on time. 
to Jaza, try and get a win here. Jaza, it's very important that you, you you win when you are playing your friendly games because those FIFA points when it comes to the rankings are very, very important. Now, when you are going to tournament, the rankings are being used to know which teams will be in each particular and point. And that is the reason why you need to start winning games like this or friendly matches uh, like this. But it's sad that you've not been doing that in recent times. Watambala with that close header! That should be and then came off a Black Stars defender and the referee says it's a corner kick. And it looks like the Ugandans are enjoying themselves after pulling parity here. It looks like they've been in firm control, dictating the pace. They're finishing the second game. half. You know, being the brighter side, creating a lot of chances and getting some set pieces as well. And then talking about FIFA rankings, Ghana are currently 67th in the world, and Uganda about 25 places up at 92. So that's where they find themselves. But then Watambala, he's been on set piece duty since coming on. How do the Blasters defend this one? How do the Ugandans make good use of this one? The header, but then fisted away. By Jojo Wallach on the return ball again. Who does it come off? But in the volleyball! The volley! Yeah, that's that's nearly outside. Jackson Mohammed, that's but then the outside. flag yeah. goes up. But then the Blasters are still leaving dangerously. Is that this brings uh, memories of when I was in the state for that Ghana game against uh, Mozambique. And it just ended after so much pressure on the Ghanaians in the dying mess of the game. And then we consider those late, late, late goals. Is it deja vu all again for the Black Stars? Well, I pray we get a win in this, but we just have less than three minutes plus maybe additional time to get that particular win. And if anything, or if any of their previous games at the AFCON is anything to go by, then Coach Otuano should be working on how to close games because they relinquished their 2-1 lead against Egypt in the second game at the AFCON group stages after taking the lead twice in that game. And in their last game, they took a 2 0 lead against Mozambique and allow Mozambique to claw their way back. Ketesi Reynido, the Atletico defender, Atletico de Madrid defender who scored in the dying and best to break the hearts of Ghanaians. But it's still here in Marrakesh, it's still the African Week celebrations. And it's the African teams who have converged in Morocco with some football friendly games. But then the head coach, Paul Putt, the Belgian, still not content, it seems. His demeanor says it all. His team has won two of their last five games, but then the Black Stars are winless in any of their last six. Free kick to the Queens of Uganda. And it's Abdul Karim Watambala again. He's been very, very active. Then, no. Mobile in the second half. He's been one of their best players since coming on on set pieces duties, winning set pieces for them. He's been very, very good, creating an offensive outlet for them as well. Will the Black Stars defend this one? The Cranes still have their eyes on the prize. Looks like neither team is content with the scoreline currently, but then they're in swinging over there, cleared. He will go back to his goalkeeper, Tommy Kara, who plays for Boo in the Ugandan top flight. Tommy Kara will send one strong one inside. Andre Morgan Rami Ayu to Salisu. Forced to move back to Wallacott. Ali Dusedu. Ali Dusedu will move past two Ugandans. Referee whistles for the other advantage, but then whistles for uh, the foul. And Ali Dusedu is complaining, saying that you should have allowed me to just progress that ball. But then, substitution for the Black Stars of Ghana. And it's another speed star who tried to add some bite and agency up front for the Black Stars. And he'll be taking the place of Abdul Fatawi Sahaku. So it's number 27, shirted man. Osman Bukhari, who plays for Red Star Belgrade in Serbia, and he has taken the place of the Leicester winger. Well, I'm a bit surprised to see, you know, Fata Isaku playing nearly 90 minutes in the game. But I, I must say that on the whole, the second half hasn't been impressive. 
from the Ghanaian side. The Ugandans have been in total control of the second half of the game. Uh, and, and that's a bit worrying because I was thinking that the momentum that we, we started the first half with, we will come into the second game trying to consolidate on that, that lead. But we missed a lot of the intensity in terms of the build up in the second half. Morgan, are you? No, but then get seven year clearly trapped and cleared by Uganda. Salis manages to hold and keep possession. Ali Dusedu dances his way past the Ugandans. Still dancing his way. That's Taish Nante. The cross just too long. Rises too much for anyone to get at the end of the blaster still in possession. Bit of a tussling over there. Blasters keep possession again. If it is Anand, loses possession. Is the Ugandans who would love to break free. Now that recovery went by the center backs of the Black Stars and Jerome Opoku. He's been rock solid this evening. For me, I, won't, I don't think I'll be wrong to say he's been the man of the match from the Ghanaian you know, uh, uh, team. He's been very, very solid at the back, getting a goal as well. But, but Ali Sidhu has also have, you know, had a very decent second of coming and driving the ball from defense. I, I, I'm a bit surprised as to how he's going past players with so much ease. That is something that is new to me uh, when it comes to Ali Sidhu. We all, always know him for that rugged tackling and hard tackling from, from him, especially when he's playing at that right back position. Looks like Ali Sidhu has just added a new trick to his skill set. And that's dancing his way around defenders with so much ease, which is quite scary and strange. But then the Black Stars have a little over 90 seconds to try and win this one here in Marrakesh. If it is a Anand, will he cut back? No. Another disappointing pull out. But then the Guardians will still keep playing. It's Tariq Lampton who draws the be foul. A foul boy, the yes. yellow card. The ref whistles and the yellow card will be flashed. To Moses Aliro and the Black Stars have a chance to win this one at a death. So it's the last minute of added on time. Referee signal four minutes of added time and Tariq Lamte will be the one affecting this one. He's been tasked to get something productive for the Black Stars. Tariq Lamte, he can count up to about seven Black Star shirts in the Ugandan box. And this is the time you buy the lottery ticket and you hope it just gets you what you want. And that should be a very decent ball into the 18-yard box and hoping that you get your player at the end of it. Or maybe a quick deflection uh, uh, to that particular delivery. Looks that like seems... a couple of the Black Stars players have withdrawn. But then at this point, it's either you go for all or you go for nothing. You're wondering why they are still keeping players outside the box when it's it could be literally the last kick of this game. I would be surprised if from this particular action there is an extra additional minute added to the play. So, the four minutes are up, but then additional time being played here in Stai Atlante, ready to get this one for Ghana. A long one over there, but then cleared by the cranes. Play will still continue, but there's an honor. If it is Alan still in possession, all the way back to Jojo Wallacott. A long one, cleared, but then miscued, not cleared properly. And the Black Stars. Intensity very high for them now. Tariq Lamte with a throw in into the box. The header, another strong header from the Cranes. Another header. And the clearance from Janderson Mohammed. And it's all over here. 
It's all over here at the Stade Grand Marrakesh. Where after 90 minutes of end-to-end -end football, is the craze of Uganda who hold the Black Stars to a pulsating 2-2 draw. What a game it has been. Yeah. Ups and downs. The cranes going down twice in this game, but then showing resilience and character. And you can see Ali Dusaidu speaking to El Farid Hamza, the broken coach. Coach Otwado is also in there. I'm sure they are discussing the goal that Ghana conceded, whether it crossed the line or not. And that is the argument now. And Coach Otwado has also joined there. You can see Andre Ayu also in there. The players venting their frustration and disappointment for that goal not being chugged off, well, for having crossed the line. But as the referee says, it's a goal and it's stood. It's it's a friendly and there is no goal line technology as well. So I, I think it was good. You've you've told the uh, the referee your point. Just get the players away from the scene and then they move move away. So it's the Black Stars of Ghana and still that mini conference, the confabulation between Andre Ayu, the captain, the head coach also there, and the match officials. But, 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 Jose, I must say that it's been a game of two halves. Ghana played better in the opening 45 minutes of the game. Their passing, passing patterns were quite good. But in the second half, we have to give total credit to the cranes of Uganda. They came in better. They had a lot of chances in the game. Walakot made two decent saves. Even with the, the second goal that Ghana conceded, he made quite a very good save. On, on that particular ball before you cross, you cross the line. So uh, I, I think that the 2 2 score line is a fair reflection of what we've seen in Morocco this afternoon, this two, with these with this two uh, particular teams in this friendly game. It's a fair result. Ghana played better in the first half, the second half, Uganda played better. All right, so full time here at the Grand Star Grand Barrakesh, where the Black House of Ghana have played out a 2 2 draw against the Cranes. Of Uganda for coach Otuado still has work on his hands because the Black Stars are still winless in their last seven games. But then for Uganda, they would say it was a resilient and unanimated performance in the second half to manage to get the draw here as the players walk down the tunnel. So this is the concluding fixture for both teams in this international break here. In Morocco. After full time here, it's Uganda 2, Ghana 2, and we brought you commentary all the way from Morocco, Marrakesh. I was your commentator for today. My name is Josal Kukwe, and I was in commentary position with my co commentator, Felix Roma. Thanks for having you. Bye for now. Are you ready to take your chance? Ghana, get ready to win big with only one Ghana City. Lucky Win is the biggest online casino in Ghana with lots of options for you to win big. With only one Ghana City, you stand a chance of winning a cash prize of 1 million Ghana cities paid instantly into your mobile money wallet. In addition, you win for yourself smartphones, car TVs, laptops, TCL air conditioners, and many more. So register for free today with a valid mobile phone number on www.luckywin.com.ga and also download the Lucky 